It seems like this year has been a pretty big one for new adaptations of the fairy tale Pinocchio, for whatever reason. We had a CG animated film featuring the voice of Polly Shore and a live action remake of the Disney classic, but it looks like the best one was saved for last. Making its way to Netflix just in time for the holidays is another version of Pinocchio, this time helmed by legendary director Guillermo del Toro. This retelling of the classic story is done entirely in stop motion, although it differs greatly from the source material. This film still has all the joy and wonder of the 1800s fairy tale. You wanted me to live! You asked for me to live! That said, in this radical reimagining of the timeless story, one question remains. Which characters have a real human heart, and which ones are as cold as a woodcarver's tools? I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is Pinocchio Characters, Good to Evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most noble and good-hearted character, and working our way down to the most evil. These characters are the good. Earning the gold medal of good is none other than the boy made out of wood, Pinocchio. While a lot is different about this iteration of the Pinocchio story, its main character is virtually identical to most versions of the story. I'm a real boy! He's still the same fun and adventurous puppet we all know and love. Pinocchio is full of wonder and is very naive, practically to a fault. He's quite trusting of others, which is both a strength and a weakness to his character. When those characters have good intentions, it strengthens the bond he has with them. When they do not, however, it can cause others to take advantage of Pinocchio, which is something of a recurring problem in the film. Pinocchio is also deeply caring for his friends and family. He'll do anything to make sure they're safe. Going as far as to relinquish his immortality to save them. What really gives Pinocchio the most celebrated spot on our list, however, is how his character makes almost everyone around him a better person. He helps Candlewick stand up to his abusive father, gives Spazzatura a new home, and gives Geppetto another chance at fatherhood. His actions make the world around him a better place, and that's something you can't say for anyone else in the film. He might be made of wood, but he's got a heart bigger than anyone else's. The Silver Medal of goes to Pinocchio's tiny but courageous friend, Sebastian J. Cricket. An aspiring writer, Jiminy Cricket resides inside Pinocchio's wooden frame, and is entrusted by the wood sprite to be his guide. Much like Pinocchio himself, Sebastian isn't really that different from most other versions of his character. As usual, he's the polite voice of reason that also is the source of a lot of the story's comedic moments. No, wait! You have to go to school! Although he isn't always at Pinocchio's side, and he does fail him a few times throughout the story. Sebastian remains very protective of the child. He teaches many of the major lessons featured in the movie, and he sticks up for him whenever it's needed. When Pinocchio leaves to join the circus, Sebastian confronts Geppetto and tells him just how much he looks to him as a father. This act galvanizes Geppetto, leading directly to the two going on their quest to find him. It would be an incredible understatement to say that Sebastian has a great connection to Pinocchio. In a way, you could say he's as much his father as Geppetto is. After Pinocchio appears to die during the film's finale, Sebastian gives up his one wish given to him by the wood sprite to resurrect him. And if that isn't love, we don't know what is. Sebastian is proof that sometimes a mentor isn't a wise old man or a teacher. Sometimes it can be a little Scottish cricket. Rounding out this section, we have to give the bronze medal of good to Geppetto. Out of all the major players in the film, Geppetto might just be the one who most greatly differs from other incarnations. This version of the character has a lot more sadness and pain within him than most are probably used to. Years before Pinocchio's creation, Geppetto had a son known as Carlo. The two shared a beautiful bond before he was killed by a bomb. Geppetto is brokenhearted by the event for years afterwards, until the day comes when he decides to create Pinocchio. At first, Geppetto isn't too trusting of the boy. He looks at him as a burden more than anything else. He constantly gets both himself and Geppetto in trouble, and he worries the woodcarver greatly. However, as the old saying goes, you don't know what you have until you lose it. After Pinocchio deserts him, Geppetto starts to see how much love Pinocchio had for him, and how big of a fool he was to ignore it. He ventures off with Sebastian to save him and is overjoyed when the two finally reunite. Although it takes 
makes much of the movie, Geppetto's heart finally mends, and he feels peace in a way he hasn't since the death of his beloved Carlo, easily the character with the most dramatic arc in the entire movie. With the good section wrapped up, we now move into more neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray area. First up is the Podesta's son, Candlewick, another character who differs vastly from the source material. Candlewick is billed as the model fascist youth by his father. He's a pretty uncaring child when we first meet him, as he encourages the naive Pinocchio to put his legs into the fireplace, burning them right off. However, as the story unfolds, we learn that his bullying demeanor is really a facade. In reality, Candlewick wants nothing more than his father's acceptance. His dad, unfortunately, sees him as a coward who he's ashamed of. After Pinocchio is taken by the Podesta into a training camp, Candlewick starts to genuinely bond with Pinocchio. The two learn they're far more alike than their fathers are, and this eventually culminates in Candlewick standing up to his hateful father and letting Pinocchio escape the camp. As we mentioned earlier, he's a great example of a character who becomes their best self because of Pinocchio's influence. Though Candlewick's attitude during the first half of the movie does sadly cost him a higher spot on our list, his reformation and bond with Pinocchio gets him a nice and cozy spot at the top of the gray area. He's a whole lot nicer than the Disney version, that's for sure. Next up, we actually have two characters, those being none other than the spirits. The creatures are fairies that possess immense power, but only make a few brief appearances throughout the film. They are the wood sprite, who gives Pinocchio life, and her sister, Death, who guides Pinocchio whenever he enters the afterlife. Both characters are largely absent from the narrative, only appearing when they're absolutely needed and necessary. You cannot truly, truly die. Really, they are the perfect characters to be smack dab in the middle of a list like this. Nothing they do is truly good or evil. Even the wood sprite's act of bringing Pinocchio to life is seen by death as a careless act. Her later resurrection of him, too, is also little more than honoring the wish she was to give Sebastian. You could almost see the two of them as something akin to overseers more than they are actual characters. Although both play a major role in the story, neither one necessarily has good or bad intentions. As such, they sit here representing the perfect gray. And wrapping up the gray area is Spazzatura. This little monkey is the assistant to ringmaster Count Volp, and tags along with him during his many acts of villainy. He helps his master ensnare Pinocchio into their plan, and when it appears that Sebastian may try to pull him away from their grasp, he tries to kill him. Spazzatura sounds like a pretty rotten egg, but he does in fact possess a conscience that his master lacks. Spazzatura sympathizes with Pinocchio's problems, although he worries about upsetting Volp for fear that he'll be mercilessly beaten once more by him. He keeps all the money for himself. However, as the film draws to a close and Volt makes an attempt to take Pinocchio's life, Spazzatura turns on his master and helps Pinocchio get away safely. He even aids Pinocchio in saving Geppetto and Sebastian, and decides to live the rest of his life with them. It's clear that he's changed for the better by the end of the film. But since he spends so much of the film at Volp's side, we unfortunately have to refrain from ranking him any higher. Still, in terms of cartoon monkey characters, you could do a whole lot worse. With the gray area at a close, we finally enter the dark side. These characters are the evil. The silver medal of evil goes to Podesta, a high-ranking official in Italy's fascist government. The Podesta is tasked with recruiting the youth of the country to join the war effort. While he initially sees Pinocchio as an abomination, the reveal that he is immortal starts to make the Podesta believe that he is the ideal soldier. After Pinocchio is killed, again during a performance, he takes him to a camp with the goal of training him to be a great soldier. You will make your fatherland proud! He is a very manipulative figure, as he uses the notion that fighting will make both his father and the country proud, to get Pinocchio to trust his judgment. He's also abusive towards his own son, Candlewick. He sees him as a weakling and slowly begins to take more of an interest in Pinocchio than him, much to Candlewick's dismay. After a training exercise ends and the two boys tying, the Podesta orders Candlewick to shoot Pinocchio, and when he refuses, has no problem taking that matter into his 
own hands. Though he is ultimately unsuccessful and perishes shortly after, he remains one of the most dangerous and hateful individuals featured in the movie. But finally, we get to the gold medal of evil, which has to go to Count Volp. He is the main villain of the movie after all. And could it have really gone to anyone else? Volp is a ringmaster and puppet master, but before all of that, he was an aristocrat. He possessed enormous wealth, and he seeks to reclaim that sense of fame through a circus and its newest attraction, Pinocchio. He manipulates Pinocchio into joining the circus, forcing him into a contract that is one-sided and entirely in Volp's favor. When Geppetto attempts to get Pinocchio away from the circus, he plays a direct role in the puppet's first demise by refusing to let go of him. As the story goes on, Volp doesn't get any nicer. We later learn that he is horribly abusive towards Spazzatura, whom he perceives to be a bumbling fool who can't do anything right. Nobody wanted you, but I saved you. In a way, their relationship is almost like a morbid parallel of the one Geppetto and Pinocchio share. While we saw a relationship between two good-hearted individuals, the relationship Spazzatura and Volp have is easily the darkest one shown in the movie. Even after Pinocchio is taken by the Podesta, Volp refuses to let him go without a fight. He kidnaps him later and very nearly kills him for what likely would have been the last time, had it not been for the timely invention of Spazzatura. Overall, Count Volp is as cold-hearted as they come, and the direct opposite of Pinocchio's wondrous and kind personality. As such, he's the obvious recipient of this final spot on our list. And with our morality spectrum wrapped up, let's close things out with some center medals. Firstly, the Darwin Medal goes to Spazzatura. The goofiest character to appear in the film, he is a sensible choice for this award. The Envy Medal has to go to Candlewick, as he grapples with that feeling when he sees the attention Pinocchio begins to receive from his father. The Wrath Medal has to go to Podesta, a man obsessed with war and battle. There's nobody else who fits this award more than him. The Pride Medal goes to Pinocchio himself, because let's be honest, is there anyone who has as much pride in themselves as this little fellow. And lastly, the Greed Medal, without a doubt, has to go to Count Volp. He's utterly devoted to winning back his fame and fortune, which makes him the obvious candidate. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.